Hello everybody, this is Starshot here to welcome you back to another Let's Play of Legend of Heroes. We last left off attending our fancy dinner party that we were invited to thanks to winning the uh, Martial Arts Championship uh, and hearing Colonel Richard's big announcement about how Duke Duan will now be the official ruler of Liberal as the Queen steps down. Which definitely sounds pretty fishy to me of a conspiracy, since uh, Duke Duan is a complete uh, party boy, who really shouldn't be leader of a country, much less uh, even leading a party for that matter. So, but uh, now that we've kind of learned all about this, we need to go over to the head maid Hilda, and hopefully she can get us in with the queen so we can tell her what's up. So let's get started. <sighs> Things have gone serious. We really have to find a way to get in to see Her Majesty. First things first, we gotta talk to the head maid Hilda like we promised. She probably knows a way for us to speak directly to the Queen. Fine by me. Oh, it's you. What? Colonel Richard. <laughs> Estelle and Joshua. This is our first opportunity to truly speak face to face, I believe. The last time we saw one another was right after Mayor Delmore was arrested, wasn't it? I'm honestly surprised that you remembered us. I realized that we exchanged few words, but you made quite an impression on me. I'm curi my curiosity was piqued, so I did a bit of checking up on you. I was quite surprised to learn that you were the children of Colonel Cassius. How'd you find that out? <laughs> Please understand, I'm not trying to show off the Intelligence Division's capabilities. I'm greatly indebted to him from our time together in the army. Indeed, more than words can properly express. Mind if I persuade you to stay a while and talk? I've been hoping to speak with you two for quite some time now. Huh? Pardon me, Colonel, but don't you have a meeting with His Grace? I don't mind being a bit late. Ah, uh, yes. If we're going to talk, why don't we use the lounge instead? I'll mix you a couple of virgin cocktails. Uh, I'll, I'll prepare them, sir. No, that won't be necessary. I want you to go to his grace and inform him that I'll be delayed. Y yeah, yes, sir. As we see her give the evil eye to those two, she really... He really <laughs> doesn't like being uh, told o or told to do other stuff, doesn't she? You know, I'm wondering if she actually has a thing for Colonel Richard or not, and she's just getting jealous now. Pardon me, then. Now then, shall we retire to the lounge? Please, follow me. Uh, Joshua, what should we do? I don't see where we have much choice but to follow him. We'll be a little late, but we could can talk to the head maid later. I met Cassius shortly after I graduated from the military academy. I was assigned to a mobile unit that was under his command. And since that time, I have found myself in his debt again and again, both personally and professionally. Uh, he did? And, uh, what do you think of him at the time? To put it simply, he was a hero. And a master swordsman to boot. No matter the scenario, he could find a way to handle any number of battlefronts in every direction. It wasn't just a matter of sheer tactics. He understood and could direct high-level strategy as well. Quite simply, he was a man without peer. If I didn't know better, I would say we were talking about two different people. So you were with our father during the Hundred Days' War? Yes. 
He was my CO. Even now, I can still visit, vividly remember the excitement that filled me as he, we executed his plan that turned the war's tide. Anytime I get to talking about those di days, time just runs away with me. But this much I can tell you. If Cassius Bright had not been part of the Royal Army, Libero would now be part of the Imbonian Empire. No way! That's kind of hard to believe. <laughs> well, as a hero, he had a knack for doing unbelievable things. He left the army immediately after the war, declining even a medal from the Queen, so few know of his achievements. But inside the army, many soldiers still hold him up as the prime example of what a hero should be. Uh... He never said one word about any of this to me. Well, it's not really the kind of thing you tell your daughter about. It's not fair to criticize him for that. Hey, whose side are you on? And besides, why doesn't any of this shock you like it shocks me? Do, do you already know all about all of this or something? Well, I didn't know that he was Colonel Richard's superior officer. The rest I knew about... vaguely. Vaguely? You're an accomplice! Hey, calm down. It's not like he told me any of it. I just figured a lot of it out. He told me he didn't feel it was something worth going out of his way to tell others about. Urgh. I just don't get it. When he comes back, he is in so in trouble. <laughs> Urgh. I... Please excuse us. We didn't mean to interrupt. No, no. Seeing you like this is actually a bit of a relief. When I found out that your father was intending to leave the military, I desperately tried to stop him. But it seems that by leaving, he did what was best for himself, after all. After losing his dear wife, maybe being with you was all that could help him recover. Colonel Richard? Now then, I thank you for taking the time to come here. I really can't keep the Duke waiting, so I'm afraid you'll have to excuse me. Oh, alright. Our apologies for making you so late. Not at all. You both have told me the one thing I wanted most to know. And thus, I have no regrets. Huh? How's that again? <laughs> I'm sure we'll have a chance to speak again soon. Cassius might even be with us then, to share in the stories. Um, okay, who is that man, and what has he done with Colonel Richard? What are you babbling about now? It's just that it's weird to hear him talk about Dad that way. I wasn't expecting him to be so, well, nice. True, he doesn't seem all that villainous anyway. Even so, it's pretty much a foregone conclusion that he has got something up his sleeve. For now, we should probably put the issue of Dad aside. Yeah, I guess you're right. And I hate to say it, but I think that he might have been playing nice just because he could get something out of it. He's an intelligence officer, so he probably thinks that fooling a couple of kids is as easy as could be. Don't you think that's going a little too far? You might be right. Let me be the one who's mistrustful of others. You should just follow your instincts and believe whatever you think is right. Huh? But just make sure you're prepared for anything. Don't let your guard down. I'd say a brazier's job is pretty much that, in fact. Okay, got it. I'll keep it in mind. Thank you, Estelle. Thank you? What the heck are you thanking me for? Anyway, we need to go back and see Hilda. She's probably sick of uh, waiting for us. Yeah, she should be in the maid's quarters. Uh, I do like that, uh, so for the story so far, they haven't made, like, they were able to try and humanize Richard a bit. And, you know, that he's not like the, you know, twirling mustache villainous bad guy. That he actually has a character in history and all that. Always makes it more interesting. 
then, you know, like, it's, I'm fine with having a bad guy that is the complete villainous, like, I played through Final Fantasy VI and I find Kefka one of the best bad guys you could have. He kind of definitely takes, <laughs> I'm sure he's been inspired by the Joker, if nothing else, but, but that he's just there to revel in the destruction and evilness of everything, and, and so it's easy to hate him. Which makes him a pretty good bad guy. But it's nice to have the complex hero or bad guy every now and then too for stories with Colonel Richard or Sephiroth even and all the stuff with that going on with that. Ah, there you are. I've been waiting for you. You're awfully late, aren't you? Sorry about that. We kind of got caught by Colonel Richard. Did you now? He had some things to tell us about our dad. I don't think he has any idea what we're up to, though. I see. Ah, yes. That letter of introduction did mention that you were Mr. Cassius's children. I can understand at least some of how Colonel Richard feels. Oh, did do you know our dad, too? He used to come here when he worked as General Morgan's aide-de-camp. I'm told that he was a school friend of the late prince's, her majesty's son. Late prince? Princess Claudia's father. Yes, he was killed 15 years ago in a tragic shipwreck. With that, he still were still alive today, none of this would be happening. Huh? But lamenting what might have been is a fool's errand. Evening is fast approaching. We must make our preparations at once. Come on in, Shea. Or Shay. Oh, hey. Aren't you... Shay, right? Yes, thank you for remembering. You look well, Estelle. Joshua. I've been told of your current predicament. You won't find a more dependable child. She's a great help to us whenever the princess is in the castle. Princess Claudia. That shouldn't pose a problem. Thank you. If you're ready, you should go change into your uniforms. The ribbons and the headpiece are tricky, so I'll adjust them for you. What? What do you mean? Estelle is going to need to dress as one of the maids in order to get into the royal keep. A little playing with the hair and you'll blend right in. Oh, I get it. Uniforms don't allow for much in the way of personalization. That should be ideal for sneaking in. Me in a maid outfit. I've been wanting to try one since we f first uh, s met uh, Lilia. Cute, breezy, and easy to move in. <laughs> well, if our uniforms weren't easy to move in, they would make the cleaning much more difficult. I thought so. Well, let's get this sucker on me. Why so excited? I'm glad you're in high spirits, but you need to remember your manners in front of the queen. You wouldn't have me to lean on this time. Why not? You're changing too, aren't you? Er... Pardon? I mean, he did play the princess during the play at the campus festival. Is there really that much of a difference between the fancy dress and a maid's outfit? That's different. It was a play. I can't appear before a majesty in women's clothing. Oh, you'll be fine. It's not at all shameful or anything. Besides, she made such a gorgeous princess. Not this again. Cut the jokes, will you? Hilda, Shay, help me out here. Say something. Anyone? I see. That shouldn't pose a problem. Shay, don't you have that extra hairpiece designed for the princess? Uh, yes, it's never been used, though. He has that full dark hair, so it'd probably look good on him. Hey, hold on a second. Well, it looks like a three to one vote. Majority rules. This way, please. We can use this as a changing room. Wait a minute. I don't remember ever agreeing to changing. All right, all right. If I have to change, I can do it myself. A uh, shade. You're not planning on using makeup, too, are you? Huh, <sighs> kids these days.
Oh my. Ta-da! <laughs> what do you think? I think it suits her very well. Such a bright, active maiden training. And only after just coming to the castle, too. You certainly have me convinced. And with the hair down like that, no one will be any the wiser. Perhaps you'd like to work at Gransel Castle for real when this is all settled. Well, we already work as bracers, so, uh... Anyway. Come on, Joshua. Get out here. <sighs> no chance I can talk you out of this. None at all. You're just making this take longer. Fine. You're impossible sometimes. Well, it's almost frightening how good that looks. Isn't it awesome? It looks better on him than it does on me, and I'm an actual girl. <laughs> A bit of makeup can make all the difference in the world. Please, just say you're done. Well, I suppose so. I'll show you the way to the Royal Keep. You need to make certain you watch me and learn, learn how to maid handles herself. Yes, ma'am. We're finally gonna meet the Queen in person. Yes, this is the do-or-die moment. We just have to stay focused and get to the Royal Keep. <laughs> it's hard to take you seriously in that outfit. Well, excuse me. This was your idea. I can't believe you got the nerve to pick on... Sorry, sorry, don't get all mad. I'll treat you to some ice cream later, okay? <laughs> I'm not like you. I'm not obsessed with food. Hey... I'm not obsessed with food. <laughs> they get along so well, don't they? We're out of time. Let's go to the Royal Keep. Uh, it's nice that they can have kind of fun with this. And that they're not afraid to dress up male characters in women's clothing. You know, I know there are some games who are, who are a bit more concerned with doing that sometimes. But I think it works out, like, I think it's a legitimate reason, just like the play was. And they just sort of have fun with it. Hilda! What business do you have with Her Majesty at this hour? I'm bringing some tea and spoons at her request. The current situation means that Her Majesty is denied the right to even go about her daily life as she wishes, after all. Such harsh words. Who are these maids with you? I don't recognize them. His Grace ordered me to hire on some additional staff to help. They only just arrived at the castle today. Really now? Hey, you're pretty cute. Th thank you. Bows. Sorry, I, uh, I, I feel like I have to say something, but I, I'm sure you guys can read just as well as I can. Huh? Why do I get the feeling we've met before? Crap! Do you stare so hard at every young lady you see? I do hope you're not thinking any untoward thoughts. Unt untoward. I think, ah, uh, whatever. I'd rather think that his grace and the colonel would disapprove. Hey, it's not like that. We're the elite of the Royal Army. We wouldn't do that. All's well then. Now, will you please allow us to pass? Pardon us, ladies. Please, go ahead. Phew. That was intense. Thanks, Hilda. You're a real lifesaver. Yeah, that was really well done. <laughs> I'm just glad I could help. Now then, are you planning to change your clothes before going to see Her Majesty? If you prefer, I could just show you the way now. I think I'm okay as is. Boys close, now! Oh, for the love of... Why are you always so self-conscious? What was wrong with what you had on? It's not an issue of self-consciousness. By the way, Hilda, is this room what I think it is? Yes, it is Princess Claudia's bedroom. 
but she rarely sleeps in the castle, so the room is all but unused. Huh, no kidding. But I heard that the princess was tending to the queen. I guess that's just gossip then. You would have to ask Her Majesty for the full details. Her room is on the second floor of the Royal Keep. I'll take you there. Well, it's finally time, guys. We're going to meet the Queen of Light Pearl and see kind of what comes of it. I beg your pardon, Your Majesty. I brought the two I spoke of before. This is Joshua and Estelle. Thank you kindly. Please, by all means, enter. As you wish. I'll wait for you here. You two go on in. Right. Pardon us. Oh! <laughs> I bid you welcome. My name is Elish von Alusi. I am the 26th monarch of the nation of Liberal. Um, I'm Estelle Bright. I'm a junior bracer of the Bracer Guild. And I'm Joshua Bright, of the same affiliation. It is a great honor to meet you, Your Majesty. Estelle and Joshua, I have truly been looking forward to meeting you both. I regret that I cannot offer you proper hospitality, but I have prepared some tea. Please, have some, and relax. I see. So Professor Russell asked you to bring this information. A pitch black orbman capable of negating all other orbital energies. And you say that the Colonel has acquired it? The Professor told us that you might have some idea of what he intends to do with it, Your Majesty. Can you tell us anything? I have but a vague idea, but I do not think that the Colonel even knew of it. Perhaps I am worrying about nothing, but even so... Excuse me, but what is this vague idea you have? I suppose there is no harm in telling you. Roughly ten years ago, a massive orbital reaction was detected beneath Gransel. Professor Russell was the individual who came to investigate. Did this happen in the vicinity of the sewers? No, far deeper underground than that, in fact. Professor Russell was under the impression that it might be a relic of the ancients that still functioned. Wow. So, it was a bona fide artifact then. Most artifacts I know of have lost their functions like the mechanisms on top of the towers. But every now and again, you find one that still functions like Mayor Dilmore's family heirloom. And something like that is beneath Gransel? So what does that tell us about the Gospel? Maybe it could be used to halt the artifact's functions? Could it do that? Yes. However, we were unable to establish the nature of the artifact, or indeed why it was buried beneath the city. But it is beyond my imaginings how the Colonel could know of its existence. Professor Russell's research on its on it was kept strictly confidential and off the record. I see. In any event, it seems likely that trouble is on the way. Honestly, just as I start to think maybe the Colonel might be a slightly nicer guy than we were giving him credit for. But when someone's trying to stir up some trouble, that's when us bracers come in. We won't let him get away with whatever evil scheme he's trying to pull off. <laughs> I would expect no less from Cassius's daughter. You're acquainted with our father, Your Majesty? He was a friend of my late son's, and a great savior to the nation. Even after he retired from the army, he would sometimes undertake requests from me. Really? I didn't know that. <laughs> I imagine that there are a great many things about him that you do not know. Including the precise role he played in the war ten years ago. I assume you have not been told? Well... Nothing super detailed. Perhaps then that is the role that I am meant to play. Estelle and Joshua, will you indulge me by listening to an old story? Oh, yes, absolutely. It is no indulgence, Your Majesty. 
ten years ago, or <coughs> excuse me while I go into a more of a narrator tone for this part here since uh, I think it'd be a bit better than trying to go for my regal Queen Alicia voice here. <coughs> ten years ago, in the spring, a tragedy occurred in the southern reaches of the Erebonian Empire. It caused it is yet unknown, so that is something I must omit. The Empire used that event as a pretext for their invasion of Libero. So began the sad times that would be known as the Hundred Days War. Just as the Empire made its declaration of war, a massive military force breached the Hawken Gate. In what seemed like scant moments, all of Libero became occupied territory save for Gransel. It is said that the evasion force was three times the size of the entire royal army. The reinforcements from Calivard were too late to stop their advance. It was but a matter of time before Gransel too would fall. But two months after the outbreak of hostilities, the war changed in a way that none could have imagined. Patrol airships had just been developed and were used to recapture Libero's checkpoints, uh, severing the Imperial Army's communications. The Raw Army then set about recapturing the major regions one by one using ships launched from Leston Fortress. Zuis, Ruin, Bows, Roland, with their supply lines severed, the Ebonian forces occupying each reason were swift, swiftly crushed. And the one behind this plan for a counteroffensive was none other than one Colonel Cassius Bright. It was your father who was General Morgan's right-hand man at the time, as well as Colonel Richard's superior officer. Afterward, with the intercession of the Racer Guild and the Septem Church, the war was brought to an end. But it was at that this time that Cassius lost what he treasured most in all the world. Lena, your mother, Estelle. That clock tower was destroyed in the Imperial Army's vain attempts to hold back the counteroffensive. What followed, I am sure you know. Cassius was not even able to be by his side, wife's side in her final moments. No. I had no idea. And he believed that the military operation that he himself had planned effectively caused her death. Blaming himself, he left the military and took up the path of the Bracer. All to stay with the one le one only <coughs> only one he had left you. And this time, he swore he would be able to protect those he loved. Dad. That idiot. It wasn't his fault that Mom died. How could he even think that? Estelle. Yes, you are correct. Given that all he lost was in service to his country, the responsibility falls upon me. And so, I am sorry, Estelle. I failed to protect your mother. I had wished to apologize to you for a long time. But you don't need to apologize. You've protected the peace of this country ever since the war ended. The peace that Dad and all the other soldiers who defended Libero in the war fought so hard to protect. And the peace that Mom gave her life for so I could live in it. You have nothing to be sorry for. Estelle, you have a <coughs> kind heart, and I'm grateful. It gladdens my heart to have finally met you in person. Now more than ever. Your Majesty? However, that is why... That is why I do not wish to put yourself in danger. I would like for you to remove yourself from any dealings with this matter. What? But Julia, I mean, Lieutenant Schwartz asked us to help you. I, I thank you. I am grateful for your willingness to do so. But if some tragedy were to befell you in Cassius's absence, I know of no apology that could ever suffice. I only ask that you go back to your home in Roland and wait for your father to return. But, but... If I may, your majesty, 
The peace that Dad restored and that you protect, though it was hel held firm, now trembles like a leaf in the breeze. Joshua? If the Colonel is able to use the Gospel for whatever purpose he intends, and if he succeeds in making the Duke the new King of Liberal, then what will become of that peace? I ask only that you consider that. Your Majesty? Right now, when we became Junior Bracers, we inherited a whole lot of work from Dad. After the Sky Bandit incident, we got that letter and the package, and we've been running all around creation ever since. It feels to us like our Dad's been nudging us in the back this whole time. That's why I want to defend peace, so that everyone we've met and everyone we care about can go on living secure and happy lives. Just like you, and just like Mom and Dad, I'm doing this because it's what I believe is right, and I really want to see it through. Estelle... It seems she was right about you. Huh? I, too, am ready. I would like for the two of you to carry my request to the Bracer Guild. Your Majesty? My leech, we'll, we will do whatever you ask. My request is for the Bracer Guild to rescue those being held captive by the Intelligence Division. Amongst them is my granddaughter, Claudia. Aha! So the Princess is being held captive somewhere. Yes. This coup d'etat started when I backed her as the successor to the throne. In other words, Duke Dunan was out of the running. Yes, though he is my nephew, he is possessed of a considerable number of character flaws. In brief, where he is lacking, my granddaughter shines. For the sake of this nation's future, I would have my granddaughter succeed me. Well, uh, I don't actually know her. But I personally lean towards the idea that your judgment should really be trusted here. No matter the error, there will always be those who would strongly object to a woman wielding political power. Not to mention, the memory of the invasion by a larger power is still relatively fresh. Some of them will perceive a succession of two consecutive queens to be a sign of weakness. It is hardly surprising that such a nation has taken root in the minds of some, or notion, I should say, not nation. Some including Colonel Richard, I presume. Quite right. Claudia's pending succession to the throne caught him quite unawares. That, along with the, his passing of that information to the Duke, is what led to this coup. This was all staged so that Libero would become a strong military power with the Colonel ruling from the shadows. I see. That finally lets us see the whole picture. So if Libero became a militarized country, what would happen then? A great many things. Taxes would be level levied to fill the war chest. Or bullet weaponry would be developed with the express intent of causing havoc on a massive scale. A wide-ranging policy of conscription would be adopted. And no doubt contracting Jaeger Corps would be made legal, which is not the case at present. Oh, no. Indeed, the Colonel has made very adamant requests that I enact such policies. I thought that such proposals were born out of genuine love for this country. But I never agreed that they were the right course of action to take. The Royal Army is not all that protects this land. We have worked hard to ma maintain treaties with other countries. Defending a nation goes hand in hand with free cultural exchange and trade with all other nations to the benefit of all. I feel the same way, Majesty. Yeah, ma yeah, makes sense to me. The Colonel, however, finds such notions to be womanly and foolishly idealistic. And so he demanded that I abdicate the throne in exchange for Claudia's safe return. Many people have had family members taken to ensure that they would not dare to oppose the Colonel. But I am the Queen, and I will not allow all that I love about my country to be destroyed simply because of blood ties. Still, she is my only granddaughter. I cannot simply allow her to die. Your Majesty, please try to relax. We hear you and comply with your request. We will see to it that the princess is rescued from those who have imprisoned her. Thank you. 
both of you. With that reassurance, I will do all I can to oppose the Colonel's demands. Um, have you any other requests, Your Majesty? The Gospel still has to be dealt with. And I don't think we should just leave you here. I appreciate your sentiment, Estelle. But the present state of affairs is not contingent upon my freedom or imprisonment. The gospel shall continue to weigh heavily on my mind for a great many reasons. For my part, I will attempt to ascertain the colonel's true intentions with it. Ah, <sighs> wow. What a totally awesome person. Super nice, but with a seriously strong will. I hope I'm even one-tenth that cool when I get old. Cool? Did you actually just call the queen that? Still, she definitely has what it takes to govern a whole country. Yeah. I really want to stop this coup thingy and help her. That's definitely outside of Bracer jurisdiction. Well, first things first, we do whatever we can. Right. But, you know, I'm still freaking out about how the queen told us about Dad. I wonder if she got any more tidbits she'd be willing, willing to share. Estelle and Joshua, have you finished changing? Oh, yeah. Then we should return to the waiting room at once. It's already after 11 o'clock. Actually, it's almost midnight. Oh, wow, is it really that late? The Queen spoke with us for a long time. If we stay any longer, it's apt to make the guards suspicious. Uh, and with that, I think that's a good enough spot as any. So uh, join us next time as we uh, return back to the waiting room and uh, k um, <coughs> and start our mission of rescuing Qu Princess Claudia. Until then, have fun gaming.